Thursday's market closes mixed in the grains, but a mostly lower day in the livestock futures. Pat Bunchers with Professional Ag Marketing joins us to visit about that. Pat, your specialty livestock, so let's start off with that. Cattle market had a good start to the week. Are we starting to see that market run into chart resistance, or was the weekly export report so disappointing that that pulled the market down on Thursday? Yeah, I saw a little sell-off here on, on Thursday. Uh, certainly the, uh, the uh, negative or, or poor export sales was a, a good internal fundamental reason uh, to sell that off today. But in addition to that, I think the outside market uh, uh, pressure, the influence of, uh, of uh, inflation numbers that uh, have been well documented this week um, is having it's, it's pretty hard to continue to rattle, uh, rally cattle in that sort of environment, Michelle. So I, I think those are the two primary factors for, for selling off here a little bit today. Yeah, and a little higher corn weighing on the feeder market. But when you look at the charts, we had a breakout in August feeders, and we were up at the top end of the range on those, uh, especially August live cattle. So have we also reached some technical objectives? Yeah, I think so, and I and I do think longer term here that there's a uh, there's a nice story to tell on the supply side of this cattle complex, and that's likely why we're seeing some pretty decent support in them feeder cattle, and and also why the the deferred uh, uh, live cattle markets are are willing to show some some uh, uh, premium as well, and so. Uh, we're really worried about maintaining this demand base going forward, uh, no question about it. But uh, the supply side of the story, I believe, to be favorable. Yeah, talk about that because we're going to get into some of those tighter numbers with the liquidation that we had with the drought, and now Texas has seen more liquidation. Is that right? That's right, and and so you know this is a this is a, a story that's been developing over the last year and a half or so, really up to two years in some of those regions, and and uh, the story isn't going to be completely told for a couple of years yet, and so I expect that we would continue to see tighter beef production as we go forward as a result, and uh, should be uh, uh, more favorable for 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 the the deferred livestock uh, cattle markets as we go. And that cash trade, we're still up at some multi-year high levels, aren't we? Yeah, and that's hung in here longer than what you'd expect from a seasonal perspective, which is which is pretty encouraging. And then if I dare, you know, switch over to the hog for, for a second there. I mean, just last week was our lowest uh, production week of the year with the 4th of July holiday. And, and uh, you know, we finally were able to get pork cutout values up above that 115 area, uh, showing some nice support up at these higher levels from a cutout perspective, largely the result of, of tighter supplies on, in that sector as well. So both cattle and hogs seem to be on the right side of this thing as it relates to available supply. So that cutout's actually at a high for the year now. Do you continue to anticipate this domestic demand is gonna stay strong because right now we're still fighting the export demand going the opposite direction? Yeah, in reference to you know the U.S. dollar trading on on twenty year twenty year highs here recently certainly provides a headwind on that export front, and so uh, domestic demand is good, uh, but not great like it was last summer, and so uh, I'm concerned that a, a large portion of the recent uh, support and pork cutout is a result of tighter supplies, and and uh, inevitably we're going to get into some more uh, more supply here as we work closer to fall. So that's that's something that certainly bears watching as as uh, as we get into August and September. Cash trade is held, as you mentioned, together a little bit better than we expected. That index is still kind of rising here, isn't it? Yep, it's appreciating slowly uh, as uh, quite a few of those uh, index formulas are, are now tied to the cutout contract. But um, the cash market settled off here just a little bit this week, but but from a pretty elevated level. And there's a, a fairly significant uh, negotiated trade that's taking place there in terms of volume. So that's encouraging as well. Are you worried about the COVID in, in the new strain in China, maybe slowing down some of their exports? They've really not been a huge player this year, but... I'm I'm uh, I'm concerned about China's reaction to all of those things and 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 the uh, the the challenges associated with just reduced economic activity over there and so we've uh, we've recently seen a fairly significant appreciation in Chinese pork prices which usually corresponds with them uh, expressing a little more interest in in uh, in importing. Uh, products, meat products into their country. Um, we had a good uh, uh, sales uh, number out of China on last week's data, 
this week's data was back to basically zero uh, uh, out of China. And so um, I think we're a little bit early to be uh, expecting to see much of a surge in, in, in movement into China. And and really the way you ask that question, Michelle, is, is I think spot on. I, the, the challenges that they have as it relates to getting their economy going when they're still uh, managing COVID the way that they are, I think is going to, to keep, a, keep a wet blanket on that thing as we go. Let's switch over to the corn market. Um, of course, we traded weather today, but how much weather premium do you think that market needs to hold in here? Yeah, we got a we got all the pollination to get through yet here, right? And and uh, you know this market has sold two bucks off of its highs. Uh, it tried to correct a dollar of that towards the beginning of the week, and and is now sold off, and it is within twenty five cents of the lows that we traded. And so you know you can argue that there isn't much weather premium in this thing at all. I had the chance this week to to spend some time, uh, got some good windshield time across the state of Iowa, and and the crop looks great, and uh, I think it looks great in Illinois too, as is, is from what I understand, but uh, you know the fringe areas uh, certainly aren't made yet, and uh, um, I think it's going to be, I think it's, it's probably warranted to put a little bit back into this market just in case. And the current forecast is hot, the current forecast is dry, and uh, we've got uh, we've got to get through pollination. Right, felt like a victory though when you have the outside markets down as hard as they were, the dollar up, and then you had poor exports this morning. And speaking of exports, we had cancellations on soybeans again today. A lot of demand destruction there. How much is that going to continue to weigh on that market? Yeah, the soybean complex. Uh, um, if if you have a little bit of a degree of confidence that uh, we're we're tracking correctly as it relates to uh, uh, the corn crop uh, soybeans, there there would be even more question marks. And and uh, you know needing to get some moisture in the month of August is going to be critical for that crop to be made. And so you'd think there would be some uh, weather more weather premium, relatively speaking, sort of warranted there. Um, you're right. There is some concerns as it relates to the demand side of these things. You know, though, I think I've like through the years, I think we've found that uh, um, ultimately, uh, regarding regardless of how aggressively the market trades bean demand, it ends up being pretty inelastic. And and okay. uh, if we don't see that export market for a while, this seemed to step in at some point. And let's uh, talk about the wheat market. Lastly, we had like a 10-year high in terms of weekly exports over 37 million bushels. But that market got weighed on, what, by the dollar today or talk of this corridor opening or what was it? I, I the, the Russian-Ukraine talks uh, that took place in Turkey this week probably had the most influence on the wheat complex. Um, you know, that that dynamic of the market reacting to the pr- likely production shortfall uh, created, you know, out of the Ukraine region, and then if you also open up Ukraine, right? I mean, that could that could change that balance sheet uh, pretty significantly. So, uh, hang on to your hats as it relates to the wheat okay. market. It's going to be a crazy one for a while. Thanks so much, Pat Von Church with Professional Ag Marketing.